Hey everyone, it's Diaper Perv. And I'm the Soggy Prince. And I'm Baby D. And today we're going to talk about how to train your own caregiver. Because in reality, you're probably not going to meet someone who's already an ABDL mommy or daddy. In reality, you're going to be in a relationship with someone and then you tell them about what you're into and your fetishes and bring them into the lifestyle. And I've seen quite a few couples successfully do this. Um, but you have to start somewhere and you have to obviously tell them about your, your thing. And then they don't know what to do. You've given them this information. I like diapers and age play and they're not sure where to go from there. So you kind of have to guide them and communicate with them through the entire process. And it's a learning process for the both of you. So you two have actually had um, experiences doing this, mm -hmm. which is yes. why you're here, yeah. So you can share all of your experiences. So I guess the number one uh, tip is go slow. I think it's important to sort of uh, meet your expectations and or like curb your expectations of what you may be getting right out the gate. And that's why it's very important to go slow because it allows you to kind of like take it a step at a time and you shouldn't be expecting that it's going to just be this magical connection that happens automatically without any sort of like work put into it or feeling each other out. And I think that's why it's important to like, you know, baby steps when you're trying to train a caregiver, whether it's somebody you already know in a relationship or somebody who you're meeting who's relatively brand new and or especially if they come to this as a big or caregiver and haven't yet had any real experiences of their own because they may not know how to treat you or to meet the expectations you've set for what you want that perfect mommy, daddy, caregiver, big bro, little sis, whatever mm -hmm. to be. Um, yeah, I would, I would concur. Ditto. <laughs> but um, I would also want to also say on the go slow movement of this is that uh, you know, it's it's important if, if they are not comfortable with it or just unaware of the lifestyle um, to slowly integrate them into it, doing things that maybe that they see as cute or they see as not like, like I'd say, hey, don't mess your diaper on the first time. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe that's going to be date number four. <laughs> but like yeah, that's a good point. slowly or like maybe, you know, you kind of wet your pants a little bit or something on purpose. No, it was an accident or something, you know, or like yeah, it's kind of like, I don't know, little things like, or like hold their hand and like kind of like cuddle closer or you could use certain terms. There's, there's, I'm sure certain dynamics in everyone's relationship where they could somewhere like understand like, oh, okay, like I call this person daddy or mommy or mm. you know whatever um, but just that and and like trying to add to 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 I don't know to their own likes that they are already into to try to find that similarity and then focus I guess slowly on those points to slowly break them down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's good, yeah. Yeah, and well, that, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, and that kind of goes into number two, which you mentioned. Right, the curb your expectations. Yeah, yeah, on gotcha. both parties. Right? Yeah, definitely for both parties. Um, and that does kind of piggyback off of what Donnie was saying too, but like, don't be afraid to be little, but also don't expect to be um, accepted as like a little like full-time, full-time like immediately if this is a brand new thing but you have to sort of show what it is you're into and give a taste and a flavor for what you want as a little because mm -hmm. like your bigs are not mind readers and I suppose if you have like yes. and you come up with little catch phrases mm -hmm. or things that you say way that you ways that you act and then you just sort of start incorporating those catch phrases into your like vocabulary for each other or whether or not there are certain expectations that you kind of set just based on your actions, if you're, you know, wearing a certain shirt, maybe you expect to be treated a little more little, or if you're, you know, if you have like a professional job or um, something you take seriously <clears throat> when you're doing that, maybe there is this big boy thing, uh, or big girl thing, uh, but maybe you like want to get like little texts and reminders from daddy or mommy or whoever and like mm -hmm. make sure they're checking in with you, but you have to set those like as things you want. Like you can't just have expectations without giving them any sort of 
guidelines. Oh yeah, of course. You know what I mean? Right. And maybe you kind of have to tell them what you what you're what looking you for. Yeah. Well, also too is like yeah. saying like um, like for instance, I, I'm gonna use my own um, thing with this is that um, if some if I want to kind of introduce someone into it. I will say like, oh, like even in text or whatever, I'm like, you know, I want to be daddy's little helper or I want to be a, your good little helper. I want to be your good boy for you or something. And I'll throw that in there so they already know, have a reference for what they can call me and I introduce it in a playful way. And it's also kind of as playful, like, like you could like throw that out there first to see what their gauge on it. And if they kind of like, wait, what? You could be like, ha, just kidding. You know, <laughs> yeah. be like, Whew, you dodged that bullet, you know? And like, but sometimes you get a good reaction and then you're like, oh, oh, hi, you know? And then you could kind of feed into things like that, I would think. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, because the people who like that type of interaction will go for it, mm -hmm. will pick up on that and go for it. Mm -hmm. um, um, but yeah, like about what you're saying, expectations, yeah. right? Oh, sorry. Provide something for caregivers too, because again, like we said, it's on both sides. Like, if you're a caregiver and you're looking for like some sort of full time baby, and the person you get with does have some sort of like life or career or other thing like yeah. outside of the relationship, like they mm -hmm. like not all babies or people who want to be babies are going to just give that up like wholesale and immediately. So again, you kind of have to like be open if you're looking for a real relationship with a little like what that is to them because I'm sure as we've discussed in other videos like it is a little bit different for like everybody for some people there's more of a kink situation mm -hmm. for some yeah. people there's more of a just like innocence thing some people it's not really being little at all it's just like a diaper fetish like everybody who interacts with this so if you're looking for a caregiver that probably means you trend little but um but yeah then also but it's, not all littles are yeah. babies yeah and it's all about yeah. love yeah, you know, exactly. It's like, it's, it's, Finding somebody you respect. And, yeah, and that you want to be respectful to. Right. You know, you want to be like, I want to be part yeah. of the team. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it goes both ways. Right. When, because yeah. everybody, whether you're a adult baby or not, you're still, you know, an adult. adult. And yeah, so right. is the other person you're with. So for both people, you kind of have to like, respect the like adults in each other yeah. and like find a way that you can sort of like resonate in a good space mm -hmm. with the little thing, the little and the caregiver. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that kind of leads us into your third point, which is sharing resources. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. and what I mean by that is um, giving them YouTube videos to watch, giving them, them sites to go on and look at, like hey, follow this awesome, you know, mommy baby couple on Instagram and see what they do and how they interact. Have them watch videos, uh, watch videos together, maybe listen to podcasts yeah. together. There's some really amazing ones um, by couple. This might be a good group of videos to watch together, you know what I mean? I think mm -hmm. Diaper Perp does a great job of having different people on and getting different um, ideas flowing and having great conversations about all sorts of realms of the ABDL community. So if you're not already following her, then you totally should. <laughs> Yay, thank you. Shameless plug, you're welcome. <laughs> oh, and to go back on the expectations, like as a big, just finding out about this, it can be very overwhelming. And I feel like there are some bigs that want to be the perfect partner for their little. Yeah. And, and they put so much pressure on them. Like, they have to do everything perfectly. They have to do mm -hmm. all this and that and cuddles and more cuddles. And right, and totally be on it 100% yeah. of the time. Yeah, and so maybe just to chill on that and do it slowly. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, Again, find out what's right for your little. Because yeah. there are definitely going to be, like, boys and girls out there that are looking for that, you know, kind of round-the-clock kind of attention, but not all bigs are going to have that kind mm -hmm. of attention to give to a little. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, Again, like there's got to be some sort of give back, you know, I mean, everybody has to feel like they're mutually rewarded for this mm -hmm. relationship. And so like, you know, if you're not going to be there with the dollars, you should maybe be there with like the extra love giving or maybe, you know, you get chores. The fourth but, tip. Oh. Yeah, so that's kind of good because it sort of does lead into the fourth tip, which is feedback and communication. Yes. So do you want to jump on that? I feel like you had something to say already. Oh, um, not really. Just that. Like... If you like what they're doing, you should tell them. If you don't right, like yeah, it, exactly. you should tell them. 
No, that's, I mean, that's pretty much it in a nutshell, yeah. <laughs> right. But you have to yeah. have that open dialogue already. And yeah. open yeah. minds yeah. to accept criticism. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. if they do say something that you don't want to hear, it may be difficult to hear the truth sometimes, right. people. And sometimes you have to hear the truth. And everyone's truth may not be your truth. When you have this constant communication, you're able to give feedback on what you do want to do, what you don't want to do, what you do like, what you don't like, what you're willing to experiment with and try. Once you kind of have that sort of established, it's easier to set limits, like yes. how long you're going to be little or how often you're going to be little or like what the dynamics of the sexual relationship versus how much being little incorporates into that. Mm -hmm. like, those are all going to kind of be things you're going to need to sort of like feel out because you're both individual people with your own. Yeah. ideas of what you are and are not into. So if you just come back at somebody like in the first place, when you're just brand new meeting people and ask if they're like into changing your messy diapers, that might be like a lot for somebody when that's yeah, like yeah. one no of their context. first interactions. Yeah. Exactly. They never thought about it. They have no context. So they have no idea what it's yeah. gonna be like or what's gonna be like with you. Um, I actually made a, a ABDL checklist on my site. I'm gonna link it in the description and you can you know give it to your partner and you and just check off the things that you like don't like want to experiment with and so that's forth. great yeah. yeah just put your bank account number down now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because no <laughs> and like, um, it's only like 50 bucks <laughs> to ask for things that you want and keep asking for those things I don't mm -hmm. find that's a bad thing because I when I came into this right I was only into wet diapers I was into like such a small narrow thing that I that turned me on and then as time went on because people asked for the things and kept asking then I was like mm, now I feel comfortable with with you so yeah I think I will try pegging for the first time I will try putting my fingers up your you know <laughs> holes and stuff but if people weren't not pushy but if they weren't confident in asking me and asking me time and time again mm -hmm. then I would not have said yes it would have still been a no no it would it be the way that they're asking you the question though because like they could you but know, I don't want to they could be pushy, like pushy. hey yeah. so like I notice your fingers are pretty nice and thick. You know, would you uh, would you help me out with something a little bit? Oh, I dropped my pencil. Hold on, it's like you're my ass. You know, or something. Or like, will you check my prostate? Or like, you know, or something. I would imagine that that would um, creep me out. Where I'd say, no, I'm all right. I don't don't want to put anything in your butt. But if they're uh, if they approach you well, respectfully, and um, articulate what they want. Yeah. Then grab a pillow. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I think um, my butt fell asleep or something. Aww. Yeah. Um, that's the that's the hard hard knocks of the job. Hmm. How did they ask? I think it was just with time, like just me feeling comfortable with them to do some to try something new. It's also a very private. Right. part of our lives so to even and the approach really matters to even approach and say something is scary in itself some people yeah. don't even make it to the munches <laughs> yes. yeah that's true there's so many people i know like i, I personally know, know in and i feel so and bad like, i'm like going to the come lunch. out i was like we're making food and just chilling out so <laughs> not like the focus is all on yeah. you which <laughs> like, when you go for the first time you do feel that way you're like everyone's looking at me everyone's no like maybe my boss is hiding behind that bush i don't know <laughs> also i mean if you're maybe you get a raise yeah. so you're like hey boss we're not going to talk about this about <laughs> yeah. anybody right yeah. okay <laughs> I'm not saying it's coercion, but we're going to be much better friends from now on. Yeah, yeah I, I think boss would might have been the best case scenario. It'd probably be some <laughs> loud mouth idiot. It, this would be convenient. You show up to one of these things and the person you're already dating and are confused about coming out to is already there. Oh, that funny. Wasn't that a song, a Pina Colada song? The theme? Yeah, that kind of oh, is. They're yes. looking at personal ads and yeah, then they yeah. meet up and it's yeah. the husband and wife. Yeah, yeah. Also, you're kind of like, you like son it. of a gun. 
Like, you've been <laughs> cheating on me the whole time. But uh, we both have, so hey, let's have a pina colada. That's just like, we haven't done this in 20 years, Barb. Let's uh, go yeah, there. Right. <laughs> that was the weirdest song. <laughs> discovered what it meant. Yeah. Uh, like, why it's kind of great. It's so it? original. There's yeah. so many like just straight up regular love songs out there and that one has this funny <laughs> weird quirky twist to it. It's beautiful in the way. <laughs> the plot is is definitely <laughs> thick with that one. Yeah. <laughs> but there is a plot. Like how many other love there songs do you listen to that have a plot? Like a beginning, middle, end. Like True. There are not that many songs that even have a plot right now. <laughs> Well, it's okay it to, uh, to set aside time every week oh. or whenever you're free yeah. to engage in this role play, in this age play, mm -hmm. in little space. Um, and then you can make a list of the things that you want done to you or that you want to do. Right. Because it's a lot for caregivers to remember all this stuff. Like, right. there are people who can't even remember, like, diaper checks. They'll put the diaper on someone, mm -hmm. and then they think that's it. But mm -hmm. diaper checks are a huge part of it. They are. But you also, if you're a little and you want diaper checks and you're yeah. not getting them, you maybe can, like, find fun ways of asking about yeah. getting your diaper check. Be like, I think I might have wet my pants, or, you know. Yeah. Or just leave. Daddy, please. <laughs> yeah, or, yeah, <laughs> just leave. Well, that'll, that's the hard way. If a caregiver wants to learn the hard way, or maybe yeah. you're into that, but... Yeah. Oh, yeah, which um, is number seven, yeah. set reminders. And yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. Like, have your big, you know, set it for every 45 minutes. It's a diaper check. Right, until it becomes, mm -hmm. like, a trained yeah. response. Like, yeah. it's not about training your big, like... That's what it yeah. is. It's just muscle memory, except that it's up here. You yeah. just have to remember to do the things, or get um, them to remember to do the things. Like, the idea of, like, maybe having, like, a calendar, either a checklist mm -hmm. for you, mm -hmm. or him, or her, yeah. or both of you. Mm -hmm. And then that'll allow you to kind of, like, be on point and double-check whether or not things are, you know... Etsy, Amazon, eBay, you'll find yeah. stuff like that out yeah. there. Right, things like chore charts or daily little yes. things. They have them for like kids. You can like some of them are magnetic or whiteboards, and you can just like mm -hmm. draw up on them and yeah. like do whatever yes. set the things, and then like yeah. you can kind of grade each other and keep each other, you know, like to a schedule till again it just kind of becomes like your natural rotation if that's yeah. Yeah. Or shoot, you can get a stationary at Walmart and just get a bunch of stickers and make it your own. Yeah, that'd be yeah. awesome. Oh, I guess we lost lighting, oh, yeah. folks. Oh. Technical difficulties, but actually, the lighting looks even better now. Okay, well, um, <laughs> and there's even an app. Um, what's his name? Um, not Spacey, but the other one. Dang it, Mako, Mako Allen. He made an app called We Minder, and oh, it's for bigs and littles to remind each other. Like it's good for long distance relationships, okay. but also in person. I hadn't heard of it, but that's either. cool. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll have, have to actually look that under. up. Maybe yeah. you can link that in as well, because I'm sure you'd yeah. appreciate the yes. show. But making sure that you're a good partner in the relationship and that you're uh, adding to the relationship. Mm -hmm. um, thoughts, comments, concerns. Yeah. I think a lot of it goes into or comes from what we've actually been talking about, is that like once you've sort of gone slow and shared things about each other and figured out where your limits are and are starting to like be in the lifestyle, then you also need to make sure that like each of you are providing for mm -hmm. each other's needs. You know what I mean? Like it's not like it's all give and take and it may not just be like directly like money based either. Like it's about like being who you want to be but also being who you need to be for each other. And right. I think littles we are often putting a lot more on the big yes. than um, in the other direction. You have to find the way that you like make yourself you know beneficial and more than just the one who receives all the love or all the attention or all the whatever it is right uh you yeah. really gotta figure out what it is for your particular relationship whether it is like still having a big kid job or whether it is like doing chores to make sure that like you mm -hmm. know your place is clean mm -hmm. or if it honestly is just being like a drooling idiot all the time like <laughs> but you gotta kind of figure out what <laughs> do it, it. Yeah. yeah but then be that for your big, you know what I mean? Because like you're you're your big's kid slash lover, or whatever you need to have. I'm like, how many people are there, like, as in a caregiver role that want a 24/7 baby? Have you met anyone like that? I've met people who have like, said that. that, but I don't think it's don't ever think really a true reality. Met. Yeah. It's a fantasy yeah. thing when people yeah. even say it, but yeah, I, mean, I 
everything yeah. sounds. Yeah, well, I think it is for the babies too. A lot of like little yeah. who say that's what they like legitimately want. You're like, okay, well then, I mean, you don't get to I do don't this know. or say that. Like, you have to understand that you may not be everyone's everything. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. sometimes like you'll have to go like see a psychiatrist if you need to, or you know, talk to a friend, or go. I don't know, like right. talk to like your dog. Think, just like yeah. any relationship, it's important to have a life outside of the yes. like big little relationship too. Mm -hmm. Like oh, it yeah. can't obviously just be like both you all the time because you still want to have like a full healthy, you know, mm -hmm. life of sorts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. a healthy relationship to have other friends and other people around. Yes. Right, exactly. It's, it's very important for that to take place. And and like you said, if you really need to, like without like the judgment, uh, see somebody who's been trained to mm -hmm. talk to people about what mm -hmm. they're you know, into and what they're doing and how their mental health is doing. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just came up with something. And also, like if you're a couple, get involved in the community because then you'll meet other couples yes. and then they can have caregiver friends as mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. you know, to yeah. get tips off of or just to have that friendship and yeah. camaraderie. It's actually yeah. a great idea too. Yeah, like bring them to conventions, go to lunches and mm -hmm. events and just... And that's kind of like yeah. in a Social whole life. other thing of a polyamorous friendship relationship type of thing. Which yeah. is a whole other episode. I was going to say, I, I mean with at least the ones that I've encountered that weren't necessarily adult baby or type or knowledgeable or aware, um, mm -hmm. I think that it's... I was looking more in a focus group of dominant women or dominant men mm -hmm. that are into more of the uh, age gap, and yeah. I was looking specifically at those groups on uh -huh. that life, and that's how I would find people in order to have potential yes. to even introduce this, and they would go oh, into yeah. it. Because yeah. if you just talk to someone off the street, they will think you are absolutely probably crazy, I'm sure some of them will, because they're just not aware, and they're not like... But I no mean, one's aware. That's the well, that's what I'm saying. We have to know. be the educators, yeah. which is yeah. important in order to keep an open mind and like educate people. And, like, right. You're the little coming into the relationship, right. yeah. and, and if it's you're big scary. and you know anything about it, right. it's, it's mostly going to be on you exactly. Yes, yeah. and it's the scary thing that we're talking about here. In reality and practice of doing it, it's scary, mm -hmm. but you have to trust that it's going to work in it well. Um, well, so I think you'll run into a lot of people online, sort of like Donnie's saying. Uh, definitely looking in the kink community, if you're actively searching, is probably the best place to start your search. But you should also maybe sort of um, come up with sort of a way of introducing the topic as well, whether it's just sort of a blatant come right out about it and take a shot and see what happens, or if it's mm -hmm. a more subtle way, but find what works for you in your approach so that you can even get the ball rolling. Mm -hmm. And then again, I just really, you know, be yourself. Like you don't have to be like an avalanche of yourself, but you should at least like in your interactions be honest and be open. Whoops. Because I think that's what a lot of like caregivers are going to be looking for in Littles if they decide to take this step is, you know, somebody who is kind of like childish and maybe it's cool to be mischievous or brat or whatever, but like mm -hmm. you still got to kind of like show a little bit of that what's your what's your personality is like so they can get a flavor for who you really are yeah um uh when it comes to actually like having like the discussion really try to be aware of what their reactions are uh you know what i mean like give them a second to process it and don't just like ramble on immediately about all the stuff you're into right just definitely sort of like gauge how they like come to it and if it seems like it's something that it's really like not for them it's maybe not something you should continue to pursue with that person like you got to kind of figure out like who's going to be open and receptive to it uh, when you're doing it in person or online uh, I have a lot to add on that because okay. um, when you're coming up to someone and they have no context yeah. at all like none then they're I don't feel like they're always going to be like, yes, I definitely want to, you know, right. no, no, they're, they're going to be like, I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh. yeah. And sometimes you just have to show them. I think right. I'm a product of um, sh being shown things, but also converting my husband um, successfully <laughs> mm -hmm. by showing him and immersing him, not in ABDL, but in something else. 
and I'm, I, there's a whole YouTube video about it. And it took years. I had to immerse him, and then one day it clicked. Gotcha. But if I just told, when I told him, he was just like, he had no context, yeah. didn't know anything. So he was like, oh, oh. like that. Right. So, okay. so it wasn't a good reaction. But now gotcha. he's so into it. Okay, well then, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I will. <laughs> You know, give way to that too. You kind of got to right. see who it is, or again, what the relationship is. If it's yeah. if you're already involved in something like a marriage or a really deep relationship, then yes, I do think if you want it to be accepted, you're going to have to continue. I guess I was yeah. saying more like if you're meeting somebody for the very first time or whatever, yeah. or like they have no. But it's still good to wait, yeah. regardless. Yeah. And yeah. be like saying, take it slow, everybody, and you know, it's yeah. it's a process. It's, it's a fun process. It's but, scary, but fun. There's success stories out there, like we know. And I think it really, you yeah. you kind of grow up by shrinking in a way. It's a cool sort of dichotomy. Mm -hmm. I think you become a better, broader person. Using <laughs> <laughs> more technical details. Yeah, I know. So, now we all look yes. like ghosts. 